second segment of the show for today. We're talking to Harold Love Jr. and he's talking about troubled youth and uh, how young people ought to, not only young people, but how people ought to uh, plan their day and uh, other things of interest that uh, might be of con some concern. Let's, uh, 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 Harold, sort of pick up where we left off and uh, talk about some of your experiences during this uh, time. Well, for the past uh, six years, I have been working with the 18th Avenue Family Enrichment Center. They're on the corner of D.B. Todd and Osage. It has been in service since 1934, and we provide daycare for children six months to five years. And even in those age ranges of two and three and four-year-olds, we talk about trying to provide for them substantive opportunities to plan out their days and to provide them well-meaning educational experiences, but that is exactly the type of thing that I'm talking about, Dr. Haney. Even at our youngest age, mm -hmm. we need to put into our children's mind the importance of planning. Mm -hmm. Our teachers have lesson plans. Mm -hmm. They know what they want to teach the children during, during the day. Mm -hmm. When they have lesson plans, that doesn't allow anything outside that is not productive to come in. But mm -hmm. if a teacher were to simply say, well, we're just going to sit here today and see what happens. Well, that <laughs> yeah. allows for okay. confusion to come into the classroom. Mm -hmm. But instead, the teacher has a plan for the children for that particular day. And it goes up for each grade mm -hmm. successively. So then we ask the question, what happens when the child leaves the teaching environment? Mm -hmm. What happens when the child leaves the early learning center or the school? Mm -hmm. What happens when a child leaves high school and then on their way home mm -hmm. to do their homework, mm -hmm. they run across friends or persons who are in the same age range who didn't go to school that day and their friends have plans that are not productive all right sometimes dr haney bad friends can ruin good morals good okay and so we're talking about our high school students who need to be guided and directed in a manner to say okay my plan today is to go home do my homework and to do some things around the house that would make my parents proud like cleaning up my bedroom like uh, folding up my clothes, like maybe washing some clothes, mm -hmm. sweeping around the house, doing these things so that their parents can see that my child is productive, my child has a plan. And I'll tell you very personally, Dr. Haney, that when I am on a mission to go somewhere, mm -hmm. when I know I have to get uh, to the bank before the bank closes, got to cash a check or mm -hmm. get to the bank so I can deposit a check, mm -hmm. friends will call and I will say, listen, I got to call you back. Mm -hmm. Because I got some place I have to be. Because that's the plan. That's, that's a plan, plan. Mm -hmm. and I can't let anyone distract me from doing it. There may be some times, Dr. Haney, I'll be very honest, when uh, there may be a sale on at Dillard's or someplace, mm -hmm. and I got to get over there before the sale ends. And I'll tell friends, hey, I got to get there before the sale ends. Mm -hmm. I have a plan. Mm -hmm. And so in all facets of life, we're talking about how do you then put a plan together that is productive, mm -hmm. a plan together that's not going to distract from societal norms, and a plan that's going to allow you to be a good person in our society, mm -hmm. And then when you have persons who come into your path and into your area and say, listen, go with us here, mm -hmm. you ought to be able to say, no, I can't go because I have a plan. Mm -hmm. So maybe my plan is to go to college or maybe my plan is to go and learn a trade so I can get a good job and earn some money and provide for my family in a productive, good manner that is not going to cause me to be breaking the law. Mm -hmm. So now when those come from the outside and say, well, listen, why don't you go and engage in these activities with us? I can't. Mm -hmm. That should be the response. Mm -hmm. I can't because I have a plan that I have to stick to, and the plan involves me doing mm -hmm. something productive mm -hmm. rather than something destructive. And so what we find is when our young adults don't have a plan, mm -hmm. then very often they engage in doing destructive things because that's what comes into their path mm -hmm. is the destructive mentality. Mm -hmm. Well, what would you say to uh, those who, 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 who aspire to be leaders? I mean, that, that there are certain things that they must do in education and et cetera. Sure. One thing we talked about is the fact that uh, some communities do not cultivate leadership very well. And when we do not cultivate leadership and leaders, mm -hmm. then when leaders go off the scene, we find ourselves scrambling trying to find a leader to fill a void, trying to put someone in the spot. Mm -hmm. When we should really be in the process of taking our young people and our young adults mm -hmm. to the place to say, hey, here's how we're going to cultivate you for leadership. I had one of the best cultivators in my life, my father. Mm -hmm. My father was a state representative here from 1968 to 1994, and without fail, mm -hmm. I would go down to his office after school, 
I would be in his office, he would take me to the committees that he was either chairing or sitting on, mm -hmm. and I would sit in that committee room and I would listen and I would learn. He would take me to meetings. Mm -hmm. He'd say, I need to show you how state government runs. And then we left from those meetings, mm -hmm. he would take me out into the community and say, I got to go and talk to these folks over here at the community center. Mm -hmm. I got to go over here and talk to these folks. I want you to come with me so you can see how leadership it's operates. on job training. It's, right. It's not just in the plaza, mm -hmm. in the legislative plaza, in the capital, but it's also out here in our community. So that allowed me to cultivate mm -hmm. or be cultivating leadership. Then my mother took me out on TSU's campus. She said, I want you to see how my program runs, mm -hmm. how Upward Bound runs. Mm -hmm. I want you to come out here and see how these, we tutor these students, how we help them get a, a, a head up in the academic progress. And so it allowed me to then see my mother mm -hmm. also providing a meaningful program mm -hmm for high school students between the ages of, at that time, uh, 13 and 18, freshmen in high school to seniors in, in, uh, in high school, to see how she all did her program. And then I began to be very engaged in the Upward Bound program, mm -hmm. which was then the foundation mm -hmm. for me to then get involved with students in college with their different mm -hmm. uh, organizations. And it got me involved with NAACP. Long see. before you reached the uh, college scene itself. Yes, sir. There. Yes, sir. And then to be able to give back mm -hmm. Once I got out of the college scene and say, I know what you may be dealing with, mm -hmm. let me help you. And it also allowed me to then be able to go back down to the plaza and the mm -hmm. Capitol and say to some of our legislators, is there anything that I can do mm -hmm. to help make your job easier? How can I help make your work that you want to do out in the community easier for you? Just simply give me the task, I'll go along with you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very good. And, 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 and of course, uh, those young people who are trouble. Now, some folks talk about uh, the uh, need for some kind of jobs and, and economic situations that many of our young people yes. uh, find themselves in. You know, it's, it's one thing, uh, uh, as we can make preparations for this second commercial break, it, it, it's one thing to uh, talk about planning and et cetera, but so many of our young people are sort of put into a situation where they don't have jobs, they don't have the opportunity and et cetera, and uh, while others might be doing some good planning, they are often the ones that have these other ideas as sure. to what we ought to do. And so when we come back uh, during the second, uh, second uh, session, this final se section, as a matter of fact, I want you to deal with uh, young people who have somehow gone off the track. Sure. Because as, I think as you know, uh, and, and certainly as you talk about all the time, that your father was involved in trying yes, to guide and whatever. And, and, and so when we come back, I want you to talk about some of his experiences right. and some of your experiences of dealing with those young men and, and women who have been incarcerated and what, you, uh, what are some of your suggestions as to how we as a society yes. might be able to deal with it. I I think that that would be one of the most productive yes, things that we could do uh, during this final segment to have your point of yes, view sir. in reference to that. And we will be back with our audience uh, after this very, very short uh, commercial break. 